Last week, I, I said that uh, I was uh, responding to requests from my subscribers and viewers in general uh, to talk about what was taking place last week, the momentous happening of the week uh, that includes the new alliance, the face of Kenya, the return of Kisakitui, Raila Odinga meeting, Kisakitui, Kibuda Kibuana, there was so much happening. This week, again, I wish to listen to the voice of my viewers and subscribers and again respond to their request for me to talk about BBI. Indeed, this is going to be a new trend where I will be listening to my viewers and subscribers and please do subscribe and uh, respond to their requests to talk about certain things, to explain certain things, to break them down for, for them, to break things down. Uh, I will even have an interactive session. I will invite some of my subscribers to join me during, during live productions. I'm going to say more about this at the end of this video. So today, like I've said, I want to talk about BBI. Beginning with the question that everybody seems to be raising. Does the passage of the BBI bill at the county assembly level signal and signify the passage of the referendum bill? Or does it have no bearing? In other words, there are those who say we should not read too much into the passage of the bill in over 40 counties because, according to the critics, the MCS passed the bill because they were bribed. And therefore, to expect the referendum bill to go through is to be somebody who doesn't understand what's going on. I beg to differ. I think much as there would have been carols and incentives, it is still true that MCS still have a brain of their own. They are able to read the mood of the country. They are able to read the mood of their uh, counties and their people. And therefore, it's most unlikely, according to me, that BBI would be passed, for example, in Muranga. If the MCS of Muranga were 100% sure that the people they represent were as against BBI as Irungu Kangata seem to have been suggested. In any case, this being Kenya, why haven't we seen violent reactions? Why haven't we seen people confronting some MCS, especially in areas where the, the people are very hostile against BBI? So I think there are things within the BBI that the MCS must have seen, other than the benefit accruing to themselves. For example, there are counties where if BBI doesn't pass, counties like Nyeri, they would lose like two constituencies, according to the 2020 constitution. People are also attracted to the 20, 35% and a host of other things. So when you separate BBI, the substance, from the politics, sensible men and women are likely to give BBI a chance. And I think this is what happened. So then, the next question will be, what do we expect during the BBI debate in parliament? Again, parliament will pass BBI, both Senate and the National Assembly. For the same reasons. You may add in bribe and caution if you wish, but it will pass. Again, when you are there, you must also accept the so-called famed numbers of the other side are not there. I have said many times, if Uhuru and Raila wanted to impeach Ruto, they will do so. They have the numbers. The other side talk of numbers. They don't have numbers. So this thing will sell through parliament. Much as doesn't matter anyway whether it sells through or, 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 or not. The constitution is clear. Whether either chamber of the house passes it or not, it will still go to the referendum. But the numbers are there. Because the, the, test, the, uh, the test of the pudding, or whatever they say, is in the eating. If you have the numbers, you protect Waititi to from impeachment. You impeach Anwaigu. If you have the numbers, you protect Songo from impeachment. If you have the numbers, you handle parliament such a way Duale doesn't lose his seat. Murukomen doesn't lose his seat in Senate. Kikakiman doesn't lose 
If you have the numbers, Kindiki doesn't lose. If you have the numbers, you manage Rafael Tuju. Because you do not have numbers within Jubilee, then Rafael Tuju man solo will handle you or mishandle you with the support of David Murathe. So we have the numbers. And to that extent, even within the National Assembly, the BBI would pass, especially if it had mattered, though it doesn't matter. So the, the next thing that we want to ask ourselves is, we now go to the voting. How does the voting take place? Who wins during the voting? I am convinced, beyond reasonable doubt, that not only will BBI sail through at the referendum stage, it, but it will do so with such a flying colors, with such a huge numbers, that those who have been saying have numbers will be put to serious shame. The only thing I can say is those who say the MCS, MCS were bribed will say the system has rigged. And therefore, BBI would suffer legitimacy issues. If I were to advise Uhuru and Raila, I would tell them not to allow their victory to be swallowed and lost in the cacophony of noise about rigging. If I were Uhuru and Raila, what I would do is to invite serious observers so that nobody can claim the referendum was rigged, so that you ring fence your victory. Indeed, Uhuru and Raila would need this victory because, like I've said before, this victory has a serious bearing on 2022. And therefore, I must now bring in William Ruto and say what think will happen to you, William Samoy. You may say nothing. Now, this is what Manyora tells you. The BBI victory later in this year, the BBI referendum this year, will sail through and that will be a nail in your coffin, William Samoy. I'm just advising you. What will happen is Uhuru and Raila are going to move into this referendum civic education and campaign as if they had the most serious opponent. You are not going to oppose it. Linda Katiba are a flower girl. So there will be no serious op opponent to the BBI. But Uhuru and Raila are going to move into such a high tech, hyped, with all the optics, razzmatazz. They are going to move into this, this election, this, this campaign, as if they have the most serious opponent. The reason is simple. They want to build a momentum to 2022. They want to take this opportunity, like I've said elsewhere, to build a team they move with to 2022. And they will wipe you out. So that is obvious. Now, the blunders you have made, William, if I had been you from the word go, I would have joined the handshake understood it from within. That's as early as it happened on the 9th of March, 2018. You would have become like a fool, joined inside, understood it, worked from in to beat it from inside. You, since 2022 anyway is gone, I have repeated this and people think I hate William. I don't. I'm only saying what is obvious. 2022 is gone. Forget about it you would have ripped from the disillusionment, disillusionment that will come with the sharing of positions after 2022. Mm -hmm. The sharing of power in 2022 would have created orphans, would have created people who would have been disgruntled, disillusioned, who would have not been happy with the positions given to themselves and their communities. These are the people you would have run away with to 2027 and you, have, you would have won the election 2027. But you never listened to me. I therefore must finally come back to the issue of advisors to our politicians. I have advised senior national and international politicians. You don't have to mention it. You don't have to say who. Senior, serious national politicians and international leaders. And I know what I'm talking about. The blunder most politicians make especially in this country and elsewhere, is a blunder of relying on two sets of people. One, 
you rely on lawyers. This country overglorifies lawyers. When we are making our constitution, we say a lawyer must be here, a lawyer must be there. It is when we are creating bodies, commissions, a lawyer must edit. When we are making law, we behave as if lawyers make law. Lawyers don't make law. Lawyers interpret law. Lawyers write and draft law. So one of the things is to rely on lawyers, even politicians. And William Ruto, I think you're also there. The second mistake you make, and I think this is where William Samoy Ruto fell, falls squarely. You rely on politicians. Me, serious mistake. A politician is a person who operates with their own interests. So when they advise you, they advise you with their interests at heart. A politician will also advise you by telling you what they know you want to hear. When I was an advisor to one of the most senior politicians in this country, nationally, I saw it. And in fact, it became so obvious that we remained non-politicians in that day. All politicians were chased away, and a lot was achieved. Let me tell you what happens. A politician will tell you what they know you want to hear. And I've said about their interest. Politicians hang on your court tails for their own success. How do you expect a politician in Yanza to advise Raila Odinga, for example, not to run for president? Because if Raila Odinga doesn't run for president in Nyanza, it means this current crop of politicians will disappear. Because new sets of politicians will come. But the current politicians in Luo Nyanza really are there cutters of Raila. And they cannot advise Raila. It's supposing that was the best thing to advise him. They wouldn't. Dito William Ruto. The Sunnis. If William Ruto is not in the picture, if somebody were to advise Ruto, don't run. It means Gideon Moy will rule Rift Valley. And in Kapsaret, Gideon Moy will have a candidate. And Sudi will have to go home. And they know it. So they cannot advise you. So my advice to people like William Ruto, and let me stay with William Ruto, push away the Sudis, the Murkomans, the Shungwas, the Rigadis. Kalev Kustan, my friend. Push them away. Push away some of those lawyers. Take two weeks of reflection. After that, establish a team of non-politicians and know these common lawyers. And engage on what I'm advising you. Look at BBI with only one question on the table. What does BBI mean to my political future? I can assure you, this team, if it is indeed a team away from the Murkomans and the the like, who are very good people. They are very good people. In fact, I admire these young people. They are extremely good people. But because they are politicians, after their own skin and survival, sweep them away. Hillary Clinton, did, Bill Clinton did that. He was, that's how he won the election. He was advised by Hillary. Look at around the people you are advising you. Set a new team. The moment you do that and you get non-politicians, you have a chance because the chance I'm talking about, William Samoy, for you, is a chance of a political future, which if you don't address, BBI will not only sweep you off the ground, off your feet, it will completely vanquish you. I have used this word repeatedly. If you wait to go to 2022, they will vanquish you. And they will do it in such a manner you will have no political future. It will go. Avoid that. For once, listen to me. And establish. And I truly has also said this, I think, that the problem William Ruto faces is lack of good advisors. Listen to me for once. For once. And get serious advisors. Thank you for listening to me, William Samoy Ruto. At least for once, I'm sure you will take heed of what I'm saying. What I've said has come to pass. Many of the things I've said about you and the Uhuru and Raila and BBI and the handshake have come to pass. Now you see, you don't have the numbers. They have been lying to you. They never produce the numbers. Like Mtai Ngunyu would say, out of 500, 
out of 500 MCAs, you got like less than 10 supporting you by opposing the bill. No better, no better evidence than that, that these people are lying to you. And back to where I started. I said, I'm going to have a new approach. I'll listen to my viewers. You want things you want me to talk about, I'll talk about them. I'll invite you, my viewers and subscribers, and I urge you please to subscribe. It does not cost you anything to subscribe. It helps me to grow so that I can even produce this video. But they are not as cheap as some people might think. So I urge you to subscribe those who have not subscribed. And I also invite those who have issues they want to propagate. If there's something you want, so long as it's reasonable, within limits, you want me to talk about on your behalf. If there's something you want to advertise, services, products, if you're a hotel and you feel we can promote you by doing our videos in your hotel, if you have a product you want to advertise, we are opening a new chapter to do that. If you are a politician and you have ideas you want to share, you can come and we set up a kind of interview and we talk with you to let people understand what you stand for and what you think, maybe if you are standing for election. So we are opening this window. We want to share with you. Welcome.